Hello learners, I am Sudra Math Khan and I'm here to teach you Chemistry 5070. Today we are going to start with uh, the topic of in the identification of ions and gases. So let's begin. So the learning objectives for today's class are going to be that we're going to identify the following aqueous cations and uh, we're also going to identify the anions. The cations include the aluminum, um, ammonium, calcium, chromium-3, copper-2, iron-2 iron and iron-3, and zinc. And we're also going to identify the following anions, the carbonates and chlorides, iodides, nitrates, sulfates, and sulfides. We're also going to test um, how we can identify the following gases such as uh, ammonia, carbon dioxide, chlorine, hydrogen, oxygen, and sulfur dioxide. And we're also going to, I'm also going to describe uh, a chemical test for water as well. So let's begin with today's topic. So basically starting with um, this topic, first we need to know that what is an ion. So ions are of two types. Uh, they are uh, either cations or anions, okay? So when an atom, uh, atom is the basic uh, unit of uh, an um, of any of any um, it's a basic unit of matter basically. So um, atom, this is it is neutral. Atom is also always going to be neutral. It doesn't carry any charges. Okay, when an atom is going to lose its electron, whenever it is going to lose its electron. What is going to happen? It is going to form into a cation. And because of the losing of electrons, there is imbalance between the positive and the negative charges. So because we have more positive charges, that is why cations, they carry positive charge. And anions, they, whenever an atom is going to gain an electron, what is going to happen? There's over here, it's a loss of electron. Over here, it's the gain of electron so there will be imbalance in the positive and the negative charges and then um, this is why it is known as an anion and it's going to carry a negative charge now you see over here there are more electrons and less number of positive charges so it's going to be known as an anion so this is the difference between a cation and an anion now I'm going to tell you what are, uh, how can we identify different cations and how can we identify different anions and um, and I'm also uh, going to tell you that uh, why is this, um, you, you, because you, you need to know that whatever, whatever the cat, so I'm going to describe basically what uh, uh, are the different tests. So let's start. Now over here, I have given this table. This table is very, um, very important and it's going to be uh, of great help if uh, for your exams, uh, for exam point of view, if I'm talking about. So what uh, do we need to know? It can come as it is. For example, they'll be asking you what cations they are and they'll be telling you whatever uh, whatever the results of the tests are and uh, they'll be asking you what is the cation or what is the anion or which gas is it okay so the, these type of questions come up in exams so for example if i wanted to identify aluminum um, what i'm going what i am going to do is i'm going to carry out two tests okay for example if i uh, carry out if i add it in aqueous sodium hydroxide okay it's NaOH sodium hydroxide is NaOH and this is aqueous okay so whenever that cation is going to mix up with this it is going to form white PPTs oh. white white PPTs PPTs are precipitates okay the precipitates are always insoluble, such as we discussed in other um, uh, in my previous lectures also, that um, the insoluble the material is is it is going to um, settle down. Okay, 
so these pre precipitates after forming after react uh, reacting with sodium hydroxide they're going to form these precipitates which will be white in color and when you're going to add excess of sodium hydroxide what is going to happen it is going to dissolve so it's going to be soluble in excess next thing okay these two things so far then when it's going to dissolve in that excess sodium hydroxide it is going to form a colorless solution okay colorless solution it will form however when it is added when aluminum is added to aqueous ammonia it is going to form white precipitates but they will be insoluble in excess which means these white precipitates remain and they do not form any kind of solution even when excess of ammonia is added okay ammonia is nh3 now over here we have ammonium ion for ammonium ion what happens when uh, um, aqueous sodium hydroxide is added to it ammonia gas is produced okay ammonia gas is produced but the condition is it has to the mixture has to be warmed up a solution has to be warmed up now why over here we have a dash because obviously you have ammonium ion and you have aqueous ammonia you cannot mix both of them it's not going to show any kind of reaction okay then the next one we have is calcium calcium ions they also form white precipitates because of calcium hydroxide after the reaction which is formed and these white precipitates on adding of excess of sodium hydroxide they remain insoluble okay then in aqueous ammonia what happens when aqueous ammonia is added no precipitates are formed or very slight white precipitates are formed copper the distinctive feature for copper is blue precipitates the distinctive feature for copper is blue precipitates in both the um, conditions sodium hydroxide or aqueous ammonia so a uh, blue precipitates is the key thing to know that it is copper okay so it's going to be blue um let me write it here it's going to be blue is the key thing for this okay then whatever it is if it is going to be sodium hydroxide then you're going to get um if it if it is going to be sodium hydroxide then it is going to be insoluble in excess if it is going to be uh, aqueous ammonia then it is going to be soluble in excess giving you a dark blue solution of copper then fe2 fe2 plus and fe3 plus the distinctive features for these are their color of the precipitates for example if it's fe2 plus it's going to be green in both of them and both of them have the unique thing that in both it's going to be insoluble in excess and for fe3 it's going to be red brown precipitates both in both so in fe3 uh, and in fe2 did you uh, guys notice one thing that uh, it's going to be insoluble in excess whether whatever it is going to uh, whatever uh, the solution is whatever the reaction is okay so it's always going to be insoluble in excess and you just need to remember the colors of the precipitates in all of them so i'm going to write green distinctive for this and red brown distinctive for fe3 okay then so on ammonium ion is going to re, uh, release or produce uh, ammonia gas for calcium it is white pre precipitates or no pts copper blue uh, fe2 green fe3 plus red brown you just have to remember the colors okay the rest is all fine you just have to remember the colors if you remember the colors it's going to be very easy okay for you uh, guys to learn and memorize it's all about memorizing this whole table then for zinc it's going to be now you see it's for zinc and aluminium both both of them they form white precipitates both of them form white precipitates and as you see 
the effect of um, sodium hydroxide uh, would, uh, if it reacts, if, for example, if any cation is going to be, you don't know what, whatever the cation is, and you're just adding it to aqueous sodium hydroxide, and it's going to give you white precipitate, then you add excess of sodium hydroxide, and it's going to all dissolve and form a colorless solution. Now you don't know that whether is whether is it um, uh, aluminum or whether, whether it is zinc, because both have the same reaction, right? Now what you're going to do is, you're going to add that um, uh, cation um, uh, or that solution to aqueous ammonia. Adding it to aqueous ammonia or reacting with the, with the aqueous ammonia is going to form white precipitates in both, but on excess addition of aqueous ammonia is going to make it either insoluble or it is, it is going to make it soluble. If it is insoluble in excess, then you know it's aluminum. And if it is soluble in excess and gives you a colorless solution, then it's going to be zinc. Now, this is going to be very easy for you guys. You just have to remember uh, the color of the precipitates for copper and iron. However, for uh, ammonia, uh, ammonia cation, it's going ammonium cation is going to be ammonia gas which is produced, and for aluminium and zinc, it's all uh, uh, which depends upon the aqueous ammonia because the reaction is very uh, distinct. Okay. So, all right, now I'm going to come on to the next one. Identification of um, the anions. So first of all, we have the carbonate. Then we have chloride, iodide, nitrate, and sulfide. Okay, so when you add in the test is basically for carbonates that you add dilute acid in it, whatever the dilute, whatever the acid it is. It is always going to produce carbon dioxide gas and on production of carbon dioxide gas, it's effervescence. Effervescence is those small bubbles which come up, okay? So in chloride, what's going to happen, you just have to acidify it with the dilute nitric acid and when nitric acid is as, um, is added to the solution for chloride, it's always going to form a, uh, then you're going to add um, an Ag, NO3, Ag, NO3 is silver nitrate, and it's always going to form the white precipitates. White precipitates of what? AgCl, silver chloride, okay? Next one for iodide is you also have to acidify this with dilute nitric acid and then you add in lead nitrate and it forms yellow precipitates. Yellow precipitates of what? Lead iodide, PbI2. Because lead has a two plus charge. All right, then for nitrate in solution, you just add in aqueous sod sodium hydroxide, and then you add in a bit of uh, aluminum foil, and then you have to warm it. This is the test. You all have to remember this. And these tables will be very effective for your uh, memorization if you just re uh, revise this again and again. So ammonia will be produced. For sulfide, what's going to happen? You just have to acidify this with nitric acid. So you see, all of these are nitric acid. And then you have to add in barium nitrate. Barium nitrate is going to form white precipitates of barium sulfate, okay? Coming to the next slide now. Now comes the identification of the gases. So for identification of the gases, Ammonia, because it is alkaline, it's always going to turn moist red litmus paper blue. Alkalis turn red litmus paper blue. Carbon dioxide, as we learned that it's going to be um, the downward delivery method for collection of carbon dioxide. If that uh, reaction produces carbon dioxide, then it's going to be this and it's always going to turn lime water milky if lime water is present over here then it will turn all milky in color chlorine always turns because it is an acid it is all it always turns blue litmus paper red and then it is going to bleach it this is the property of chlorine that chlorine is a very good bleach hydrogen gas always gives a pop sound when 
uh, uh, with a lighted wooden splint and oxygen lights up a glowing splint okay it relights a glowing splint however the uh, for with the hydrogen ga gas it's going to give you a pop sound sulfur dioxide turns uh, acidified potassium magnate from uh, purple to colorless whereas uh, it turns um, acidified aqueous potassium dichromate from orange to green and with water, uh, water is always going to turn. Anhydrous means uh, with the one which is uh, dried up. It does not have uh, any water molecules in it. So it's always going to turn the copper to sulfate uh, uh, crystals from white. They are always white to blue. And it's also going to turn blue cobalt chloride paper into pink. So this is the distinctive feature. You just have to revise. I have just minimized these and uh, make them very uh, clear to you all, uh, for you all to remember. So this is uh, going to be very helpful for your exams as well. So thank you very much. This is it for today's uh, um, video. And uh, if you guys have any questions, please comment down below and I'll re I will reply to them. Happy learning.